is any reason why those aren't on the guys this season? I know that wasn't your call, but I mean, is that something that you ever experimented with in Oregon or familiar with? I've never seen that before. Yeah, some teams do like the cushion shell over the helmets, I guess, to prevent uh, the head injuries. That's not on the radar for them. Nah. <laughs> Fair enough. Nice on these kind of days to have this building right here to stay out of the, the, the elements if you need to? Uh, I think if you need to. Uh, there's times where you, you need to go out and perform in the rain as well. You know, but for us right now, we're in spring ball and uh, we need as many good reps as we can get in. Um, we're going to try to do that. And plus, we don't have to tear up the beautiful grass field out there for no reason. Well, we spoke to uh, Keith Gavin and Tamari and Terry. Uh, what's it? I guess you don't know what it's like yet, but to have two big targets like that in, in your passing game, how big of an asset is that? That could be a, um, a very big asset for us. You know, uh, those guys are strong, um, they're physical, and I think they really got strong, tall, physical receivers that can catch the ball. Um, they can do a lot of damage for you, you know, but both of those guys are really talented and um, having, a, having a good spring. How have you seen them kind of take to your offense so far? Good. Um, I know, uh, I think almost every practice, um, Terry has, has scored a touchdown, you know, so uh, he's been doing well. Uh, all of Gavin has been doing well. Uh, Matthews, those guys are coming along uh, pretty well. I think as we start to slow down on install, I think they'll start having a lot more production where they don't have to think as much. I think we think a lot of competition like between guys at the same position, but how much is the competition between the, like, the wide receivers and the DBs kind of sharpen those guys every day? Um, it's huge because we feel like we got really good DBs and you know, we feel like we have a couple good receivers until we get some more in here. But um, um, it's always good and we try to match those guys up um, when we do one-on-ones and, and, and different things. So good going against good. and. Uh, a lot of those guys to compete and, and get better. And we always say we won't win it, so we'll see who's going to win in those, in those uh, competition drills. But um, it always helps when you can have uh, good on good and some really good players that can compete against each other. And, and like they say, iron shop and iron. Coach Kelly seems to have such a natural teaching style with those guys. Is that one of the big the things Godfather, that, that you like about him? Uh, the thing I like about Coach Kelly is, is uh, he's a great mentor. Uh, he understands all aspect of, of the game, and and yeah, great people skills. You know, he he can get along with pretty much anyone. Um, he's a great teacher, and uh, and our guys, not only our guys but coaches, uh, all enjoy being around him. You know, but he's a good football coach, good person, and uh, good for our football program. It seems like Coach Kelly's kind of thriving on the fact that he's an on-field coach now, whereas he was off-field with, with you back at Oregon. Is that something about him that kind of just re-energizes that he's back on the field? Uh, I think you got to be energized when you're out there on that football field. And, and Coach knows ball, and um, he hadn't been out there in a while, so I'm sure he's excited and fired up. And um, I'm sure the game changed a little bit, too, for him. But he's, yeah, he's Coach Kelly that understands the game. and. and Say from a schematic standpoint and fundamentals and technique, the game had not changed, and um, he's big on those things. So, uh, great teacher and uh, great mentor, and, and, and uh, again, he's great not only for our players but our coaching staff as well. So, this morning, the guy that didn't, didn't play last year. So, when did you? Do you remember when you first became aware of him? Oh yeah, uh, bowl practice came out bowl practice, and uh, him and Blackman connected a couple times down the field, and I was really impressed. He stood out. I knew his name really quick. I remember his name really quick. When the, what are some of the things he's had, he has to work on to, to be able to translate the side of Well, I think a big part is just understanding the offense. You know, uh, the kid's making plays now, and, and he don't have a full understanding of the offense. And, and once he, he get a grasp on that, I think he really can play freely and don't have to think about, uh, am I going to make the mistake or not? I can just go play. And uh, when, when he knows what he's doing, it's, it's tough. That's what do you think is a challenge for the, uh, the uh, quarterbacks learning the offense? And, Say it again, you know, I'm what sorry. What do you think is the biggest challenge for the quarterbacks learning the offense and being able to run it like you want it? Uh, the biggest challenge is, uh, sorry to say the biggest challenge, it is they just got to learn it and, and then be able to compete every day and get better every single day. You know, uh, it's, it's not hard. It's just new verbiage. Um, we run 
some of the same plays they ran before. We just call it differently, and we go about doing it differently than what they did. So um, just understand exactly what we're calling and why we're calling it. I think that's, if there's anything, it's, it's the challenge of knowing why and then then going out and execute the plays um, because this is what we're looking for. And uh, Just like we talked about with the receivers, it's no different with the quarterback. They got to learn the system so they can play freely and, and do the things that they do well. Looking at Cyrus and Hans, are the two guys who kind of found their way on the field as freshmen. How have you seen them kind of look to take the next step? Um, they, those guys have had a really good um, winter condition. Uh, from day one, those guys have been highly competitive and, and have bought into what we're, we're trying to do. And uh, those guys are um, passionate about being here at Florida State and, and, and want to win. And, and they're highly competitive. And, and that's a big reason why they were on the field early. So um, I think those guys really want to build off of uh, last season and, and continue to get better. Is there a situ situational scrimmage tomorrow? Uh, what are you looking to, to get out of that? And is it kind of a, a milestone for the guys to you know, go through that? Um, it is. You know, so so often you just put them out there 11 on 11, tell them to play football, and they're running plays, but they're not understanding the situation. And uh, we're just trying to teach our guys the game. You know, we're going to put them in a lot of different situations throughout. Uh, a lot of game situation and, and making sure that they're they're locked in and understanding where they're at and they're not just out there running around and running lines on the playbook but knowing the situation and knowing what uh, the tendencies and what people like to call I think the more they can understand that the better they can do their job so uh, just teaching them the game and, and then uh, next week we'll have a full scrimmage you know so they can put it all together so um, you're still teaching. Where are the guys that are rehabbing, or some you hope to get get back before spring's done? Uh, yeah, uh, um, a couple of them. We heal a little differently around here, and um, so I think some of those guys will be back quicker than we all think. Any that you can share? Which players we might see uh, in the spring game? I, I can until they come back. Okay. You know, so once they come back, I, I tell you, I just don't know when or whatever. I know we heal differently, so. If the doctor said three weeks, probably about two weeks for us. How, how have last lot Ricky and Logan looked? And, and what, is there any competition for them, or is it just within themselves? It's, it's competition with everyone, you know. Um, again, we don't know anybody. We just got here, and they don't know us. And we don't know them. We know each other a little more than that. But um, we're letting them all compete, you know. And, um, again, nobody has a job, and we want guys that's going to be consistent in what they're doing. And, um, we put those guys in, in tough situations throughout the day too, you know, and they don't know when they're going to be called on throughout practice, and so they got to be ready and keeping themselves warm. And uh, a lot of times, it's they put pressure on them where um, the conditioning on on whether you make the field goal or not. So it's know, not so. really like a special team segment they're, they're coming in. They're we have play. special team segments, but there there will be times, but there are times in practice where we just call field goal. And you got to be ready. You don't know when that time is going to be. It could be at the beginning of practice, the middle of practice, at the end of practice. You just you got to be ready to come win the ball game for us. Coach, where are you guys practicing? Uh, do the scrimmage at? Uh, here. 